right, so here are my legs and all the components for the frame jig over here. So let's set this thing up. These are a little half inch pipe. They have three eighths inside diameter. It's like perfect for these things. So I've just got two little pieces on either side as uh, spacers. This three eighths inch bolt goes right in the dropouts and the rear of the frame here with the wheel, the axle would have been. And then in theory, I just tighten everything down here. And we got some nuts there. All right, so now the fork goes up here. All right, so then you can kind of angle this, tighten it down a little bit more, really get it where you want it. Uh, at the moment, I'm not really sure. This could go up or down. This is gonna, the rake of this will probably change, all that stuff. So, I mean, the rake's probably gonna be something more like that. All right, so that is now level-ish. Gives me a better idea of how everything will actually sit can kind of measure out how far we are apart. You can almost imagine a bicycle there. Pretty sweet. All right, so I've now got an idea on how long to cut out that bottom tube there to get me started. And I'm hesitant to get started on this thing because I've never done this before. I've never even notched a tube before. And so do I have a tube notcher? No, I'm gonna notch these by hand. And so there's all these extra sort of skills that I'm going to be teaching myself or learning as I do this process, building a frame, notching tubes, welding uh you know bicycle frames because these this is like chrome i think this is one one of these frames is like chrome molly which is a different type of steel and how am i going to weld that and is it how is that going to affect welding and all that sort of stuff there are a number of variables here that are new and i basically i'm just because there's so many variables uh i feel like i'm very far away from perfection here not that anything is ever perfect but like i'm i know there's a big <laughs> there's a a bigger gap and a larger probability of imperfection here and that troubles me a little bit. Extra variables are like weighing upon my head, right? And so I'm trying to account for as many of them as I can, but because I've never done this before, I don't know what they all will be. There certainly is going to be a few of them that I didn't think of because I haven't been here before. And so I just sort of have to dive into this thing and go for it and I'm just gonna see how it goes, you know? Luckily, I have invested almost nothing in these bicycles, so there's, it's really just a, it's really just a time commitment on my part, and really there's just a huge opportunity here to learn some stuff. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and overcut this tube. I know if I cut it about 18 inches, I should have more, I should have an extra two inches or so there, and I'm hoping that's plenty. And then I gotta cut the, the steering tube as well, and then I gotta sort of, line those suckers up and see and try and get those. I can at least get that at a 90, which is where I want that to be. And that, that's probably a great place to start. So here we go. All right, so this is kind of a, a rudimentary way of doing this, but what I'm doing is I've got frame jig here and this, I don't know if this is a level or not. I'm not worried about level. I'm just worried about this, if this is, this is parallel to this up here. My basic assumption is that this is straight and then I want this to relate directly to that to be parallel to that. And so what I'm doing is I'm measuring at a couple points here and just looking at the center of the tube. I'm at 28 inches there. 
If I come over here, I'm also at 28 inches. So now this should be parallel to that in theory, right? And given that, now I've got this little plumb bob sort of situation over here. And this guy, it should be a 90 degree angle right there. And that's what I want. And then down here, I want another 90 with this tube right here coming back and meeting up with my my bottom bracket tube. This guy now I want to I want to know what is this length? What's the distance between these two? What do I need to what do I need to cut the next pipe out for? To do that, I'm basically I'm going to measure from the base from the frame jig up to this the center of this tube here and that's about six and a half back there, right? So then if I come up here, put this tube at about six and a half and then go up to the top here and I get, it's like 29 inches up there. So 29 minus six and a half is what? 29 minus six and a half should be like 22 and a half. That will put me at the center of this tube right here. So I need to go down from the center of that. I need to add on to that. This guy is about one and a half, you know, three quarters of an inch I need to add on. So I need to add on another inch. You know, I need some space down on the bottom here. And so another inch of so 22 and a half, I need 23 and a half. So yeah, 23 and a half, 24 inches. That's right where we need to be on that tube. And that tube, this, the tube that's gonna go in here is going to be straight cut across on both ends. This is our steering tube. Those bearing cups, everything are gonna go on the ends here. I'll probably do 24. And then if I have excess, it'll just raise up the top of this just a little bit, which I think will be just fine. It will just make the steering a little bit taller. Anyways, I'm not worried about the ergonomics at this point. I just want a bike that actually goes down the road. That's my whole goal with this build. All right, so now we've got a couple tubes here that we can sort of put up here start to imagine what this will look like. So now my next steps are do the tube notching up on here, which is already halfway started. I just got to made it up to this tube here and then get this tube and shape it so it will made up back here on this guy. Once I've got this section here sort of made it up, then we'll figure out where we lie out here and we'll cut this tube again and tube notch that so that it fits up against this guy. All right, I'm just going to go at it here. All right, so it took a while to get here with the grinder, but we're finally at a place where I can take my, my right angle, my square here, stick this guy up on here on this tube, and these things actually meet up. Nice 90 degree angle. And so now I can go ahead and clean this stuff up around here, clean all the paint off of it, get that ready to weld clean stuff up on here, get that ready to weld. Uh, and in theory, that section there, that joint is, is prepped. Now, all I gotta do is this section down here. All right, so my next step is to mate this pipe up with this bottom bracket tube here. So I'm gonna want it to be something like that. So to just do a simple tube notching, I'm first I'm gonna establish my little center line here on the tube. So I am gonna do it with this guy. And then we'll try and do the same thing on the other side. All right, so there's one side there, there's the other side there. I think those things are, are equivalent. Now this tube is an inch and a half in diameter, inch and a half right there. So a third of that is supposed to be the how you do this. Um, so come down half an inch. All right, let's try it. This is an experiment, man. All right, so I believe a 45 degree angle is my goal on this cut. So I'm just trying to line this up as best I can. I'm gonna hold it in here and chop it, man. That's far from perfect, because the angles are... It's like one side is higher than the other side. It's just not, uh, it's close. And with the grinder, maybe we can get this thing where we want. But then my main concern is that you can't really tell where you're cutting in terms of the depth down in there. And 
So there's definitely a lot to be learned there. Getting, because how do I, how do I cut the other end accurately so that I have the whole total length that I need? All right, so I've managed through a bit of grinding away here to get these things so that this will meet up. But now I need to, this, this, I need to notch this thing out, whatever, so that it will fit around this tube a little bit. Something about like that, I think that'll get us somewhere. All right, so now I need to, I've got on this end, I've got, this is the top side. I wanna mark a line going down this top side. So I'm gonna use this old piece of angle iron from a, from a bed. That should be pretty straight. Looks pretty darn straight to me. Right top on there. So that I know what the heck's going on here. My next cut is gonna have to be the opposite of that one, because I'm gonna have a, this one has a pipe that runs this way, this pipe is gonna run this way. All right, so again, going back to my little plumb bob here, I'm gonna measure this sucker going from the tube. This will be like the bottom of the mouth that we just cut out, going over from there to this other one that's like 15 and three quarter. All right, so coming over here, we've got from the bottom of the mouth on this guy over here, like right in here. All right, so now we've got our pipe and this line, this mark down here is the, the depth of our throat. That's our 15 and three quarter inch mark right there. So I'm gonna be cutting it in like that to that mark. From our mark here at the top line, we should be basically drawing a line over to this quarter line. Something like that. That's what we're looking for. So this time I'm gonna try a little bit differently and I am going to use the angle grinder and come in here like that because I think I can be more precise here, coming at an angle and I know exactly where the bottom of my throat is where on the the chop saw, it was, I could see this mark up here, but I couldn't tell where the saw was gonna hit down here, and that was a little bit difficult. So, I'm gonna try it with the angle grinder instead, see if I like that better. So there's that. It doesn't do anything, but it's got all this junk in there. Let's clean it out. All right, so after a lot of messing around, I think I've got it pretty darn close to where we want to be. So if I go ahead and stick this thing in here, I know there's easier ways to, uh, to do this with like a, an actual tube notching tool, but uh, in terms of like getting a feel for it and like all the little nuances of notching tubes, like this is a good way to, to practice, to probably to learn how to do it. Let's get the other tube, set that in here, and have a look. All right, so here's our steering tube. Here's our little down tube, so to speak, here. Oh yes, my friends. It may be time to weld this thing here to tack that together. This guy tacked together right there, and I've got all my little stuff ready to weld on here. The way I'm coming up with to do this is that I've got this guy clamped down on here, and I've also got it supported up there and clamped down so that this thing is solid against the table, and then I've utilized the spacing underneath this frame tube and whatnot to make these little spacers, whatever. And this is what this guy can set on so I can align all this and I cut several of these guys to set this on and so everything should be level all the way around on the frame. I'm trying to take advantage of the fact that I do have a really nice table like this and go ahead and level all this stuff out and now I'm going to go ahead and try welding this stuff in and see how that goes. I 
got it tacked in here. I got some tacks going there and there. It's actually pretty straight, believe it or not. Look at that. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out so far. I'm gonna go ahead and fully weld this thing up because in my mind, this is like a frame singular structure in and of itself. So I'm gonna weld this up and then we'll move on to making the sort of cargo area. And then at some point we'll marry these two things together and then we'll have a bike. Thanks for watching everybody.